Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Belong Church. We're so glad that you're with us. And every week when we get everything ready for the service and just the anticipation, it's just so awesome. And the thought of how we're going to be meeting there with you, and I just want to look right into the camera and say, man, we're so glad that you're a part of us. And really, you're the reason why we're doing all this. This has nothing to do with anything other than a resource to be there for each one of you. Can you believe it is the middle of August? And I've been talking the last several weeks about I was going to have to actually say how many days it is till Christmas. Can you believe it's 157 days from today till Christmas? So if you're all freaking out, you need to start working on your list and start getting all ready for it. And it'll be here before we know it. It just seems like yesterday we were doing New Year's and then Valentine's Day. And then here we are in the middle of July. Also coming up, just in case you're not um, aware of it or you haven't heard it yet, we will do 21 days of prayer in August from August 4th to the 24th. We do the um, 21 days of prayer twice in a year, the two major seasons where we're starting a new season, and that is at the beginning of the year. We actually fast during that time, and then in August when we're heading into a new the fall and the new school year and everything, but that gloriously is not a fast. That is feasting. It is just still a time that we focus on prayer, and we'll be telling you more about that in the coming weeks. Well, last week we looked at uh, a message, and if you didn't catch it, you can go back and get it on all of our social media. Anywhere you find your podcast, we're there on Spotify, on Soundstream, on Apple Play, no, I'm sorry, Google Play, and Apple Store, the App Store. It's everywhere in the world you can find it. And it's also on our YouTube channel and on our um, regular Apple TV app and our Roku app. I mean, we're just trying to saturate all the markets. If it's out there, we are trying to be on it. And last week's message was, it's not, dot, dot, dot. And we looked at, and we're going to kind of be doing a little bit of a follow-up, which is why I'm belaboring this a little bit more than normal. We're going to be looking at, uh, we looked at last week, I should say, it's not what I think. And oftentimes the things that come against us and, and the different people we have on our shoulders telling us what to do is not even what they're telling us. And we looked at it in great detail, it's not who we think or it's not how we think. And this week we're going to be continuing on that a little bit, but if you'll re remember, we looked at, if you'll open your Bibles with us, to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And the first part of it, it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And we dug really deep on this and drilled deep into this to say, hey, it's not. It, it's not like sometimes. It's like maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it is in every situation that we find ourselves, the struggle that we try and put a face on is not that person. It isn't flesh and blood. And it goes on, and you can listen to last week's message, and you can also read the rest of that chapter in Ephesians chapter 6, where it talks about what it actually is. It's, it's an attack from the enemy and how he's coming against us, and he's trying to neutralize us. And, you know, my favorite scripture is not in my notes, but my favorite scripture that I will talk about almost every single time I talk to someone is John 10.10. 10. And Jesus says, the enemy has come to rob, kill, and destroy you. But I, I love that, but I in the middle of it have come to give you life to the full. And we see there's these two different extremes in life where we are seeing that we're going to lose it all. People are going to try and rob from us. They're trying to kill us. They're trying to destroy. There's circumstances trying to make us kill ourselves. But Jesus says on the other side, man, the exact extreme is there, life to the full. And that's the most amazing thing. But you see, that struggle in between there in Ephesians 6, it says, is not flesh and blood. So no matter what struggle that you've got, that person that's saying those bad things about you, that person that's running their mouth about you, that person that's just trying to take you out, trying to cut you, get you fired, go, uh, whatever the worst case scenario that you're facing is, that face that we see on it and say, well, it's that person. The word of God says it's not that person. For our struggle is not there. So if it isn't there, but it seems like it is there, that means I've got to change my mind. It means I've got to change the way I'm thinking. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, we looked at it, it says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around. So imagine this um, 
proud of this, ah, this enemy that's out there, this wild animal that's just working. He's lurking, just like snooping around. He's trying to find, he's right there. He's looking around. It says even like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Like he's got his eyes peeled. He's hungry. He's looking who he can eat. He's looking whose life he can destroy. And he wants you. He wants me. But can I tell you again? <coughs> Sorry. Can I tell you again? It says, if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we need to focus on who it is that we are wrestling with. And then that means that no matter how much of a face I put on that problem, it isn't that person. And yes, I'm kind of repeating last week's message, and I'm like double nailing that nail in because I want us to really have that in our mind. And I want us to actually have that as the place setting for where we're at this week. It isn't that person. But it actually is the enemy that we just saw, the devil, and he's laying traps out for us. In Amos chapter 3, and that's in the Old Testament. So if you're not really familiar with your Bible, you may say, I've never even heard of the book of Amos. You, you go to Psalms and take a right. It's kind of right there in the middle. But in chapter 3, verse 5, it says, does a bird fall into a trap on the ground where there's no bait in it? In other words, does a bird just all of a sudden just scoop down and look for a place to get snared? Continues on, does a trap spring up from the earth when it captures nothing at all? Or do you just see spring, the traps are springing up just to get air? No, none of those things happen. It's for a reason. They're placed in a place where they can get you on purpose. In Psalms, verse what? Chapter 141, verse 9, it says, Keep me from the jaws of the trap, the psalmist is saying, is praying, which they have set for me. Now, now here's where we're kind of colliding with last week. They is a face. They is a person. But we also see that they isn't that person, but it is a demonic enemy that's trying to take us out. But they set those traps for us. And from the snares... Of those who do iniquity. For, from the snares, that, that person is trying to like keep me bogged down because of the influence that's going on in their lives. Now, I'm not saying that someone that is not following into this exact scripture at your workplace, in your school, in your social area, in your friendships, that there are not people with real life faces that are being workers of iniquity. That they are not setting up traps. But the purpose isn't to say who's responsible. The Bible shows us it's not them. The responsibility is for us to recognize that I'm not going to treat them any differently because of the iniquities that they've done, because of the snares that they're trying to do, because they are being puppet mastered by an enemy. Because ultimately it is the enemy of God and the enemy of your soul, the devil, who's running around like a, a, a devouring lion looking for who he can have for lunch, that's doing all of this. That enemy is always trying to ensnare us. He's looking for any opportunity in the path you're walking to kind of put a trap out there. And, and when I think about that trap, I think about a bear trap and hunting and where you've got it. And, and it's completely different than a mouse trap because you're not putting some cheese in the middle of this. But it, it's, it, it's the picture you've got it here. It, it's this this pressure point in the middle and when it closes it looks like that and how, how many of you are going ouch when you just see that thing just closed up like that and you think about your leg being caught in that but my my thoughts on this when I was preparing my message is that this is laid in our path and a lot of the time we don't even see it we don't even notice it is there as we're walking in our day-to-day -day work it's a trap, a snare, something that's trying to ensnare us, that's trying to and 
take you from where you were going. Because how many of you know, if that thing catches you when you're walking, you're not going to continue on like nothing happened. You're immediately going to stop and the pain's going to shoot through your head and your mind and you're going to have to work on getting that thing off of you. The same thing happens in our life. The same thing happens in our spiritual life. We have traps that are there. We have traps that are laid out by the enemy because he's trying to rob, kill, and destroy us. See, if there's a mousetrap and we just put some cheese or we put some Oreo cookies on it or something, you're like, oh, let me go and get that. And you purposely go down and try and, and get into that. Then you say, oh, I kind of deserved that. I should have known not to go after the cheese. And while there's a whole other message that could be about that topic, I'm talking this morning about that trap that's laid for you that is completely unaware to you. That bear trap that's laid where you walk in your path. And you're just walking, minding your own business, trying to obey God, trying to read the one in your Bible, trying to pray in the morning, getting ready for 21 days of prayer, and all of a sudden, bam, something comes, and it just snaps you up, and you're like, I didn't even see that coming. And yet this is where many of us find ourselves in a lot of our lives. Sometimes we end up walking on the wrong path and there are snares doubly there to keep you off the path of God. We have to be careful and be watchful of every place we go. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and I love this scripture. It's probably my top 10 of the favorite scriptures of the Bible. And if I ever actually sit down and make my top 10, I'll probably have a lot more than 10. But it's, it's one of my favorites because it gives us this picture and it paints this wonderful, glorious picture of our loved ones that have gone on to heaven. That they've made a, made a decision to follow Christ and be a Christ follower. And when their last breath is here, their first breath is in heaven. And rather than just sitting up there like the, the stupid cartoons on a cloud and they've got a harp and they're just, it's not like that at all. But this scripture gives us this image that they're in this great cloud. Uh, it's like there's so many of them you can't even picture one of them. And, and the greatest illustration is like if you're in a stadium and you're down still on the field and they're up in the grandstands of life. And they're yelling, go, you got this. Hey, watch out. But all you hear down there is. <sighs> it says, because we're surrounded, they're all around us and they're cheering us on. Hey, let's do it the right way. Let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. So this is what's talking about going down a road that you're not supposed to be on and you step in that trap. It's like, hey, let's not walk down those roads anymore. Let's not go that path because we need to run, the rest of the scripture says, with perseverance, the race that's marked out in front of us. God says, I've got a plan for your life and I've got this great plan race marked out in front of you. Man, if you just do it, you're going to have the most fulfilling life. You're going to help others. You're going to make a difference in the world around you. And you're going to die and join the cloud of witnesses going, whoo, man, it was the greatest life. And, and look at this race that I ran. But we can't do that with that bear claw, that bear trap wrapped around our legs. Some ways we can't do it with the bear claw wrapped around our stomachs either, but that's all another thing since I'm just missing my words up a little bit. But another version of that in the NLT says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the, little, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight. Like, if you're carrying extra weight on, like, get rid of that because you're going to be able to do this better. Look at this, especially the sin that easily trips us up. And, and, and as I was thinking about this and I was contemplating this from last week's message, 
And, and the, the thought of what the word sin means, and we've gone over this so many times, and if you haven't heard me talk about it, you can almost pick any of the other previous messages and listen to it, and you're going to hear me talk about it because this is one of the most misunderstood words and terms in religion. I'll use the word religion, which is like a dirty word to me. It's like a curse word to me. But what people's image in their minds of what the church is like, they label religion. And this is the one that man just, just brings them to a grind. They just halt right down. And, and it is that sin is just like this heavy, weighty blanket that like, ugh. And, you're, and that finger shaking in your face like you're a sinner. You're this terrible person. And it doesn't mean that at all. And we've looked at it so many times before, but it literally means that you missed the mark. Like you're throwing darts and, and, and you didn't quite hit the bullseye, but you hit below it or you hit another wall in another room or another wall 10 miles away, but all of them are missing the mark. But it's like, hey, if you focus on your skills and you start honing up, instead of missing the mark, you're going to get closer to the mark and you're going to do better. But here we see especially that thing that you keep missing the mark with and it so easily trips you up. The title of my message this morning is Trippin' because there's things in our lives that we end up just tripping and we're like, oh, I can't walk a smooth walk because I keep getting tripped up. That sin that is just like, I keep missing it in this area. The devil's laying this, this, this bear trap out in front of me, and my feet end up in the middle of it, and I keep getting taken out. Makes it really hard to fulfill the rest of that, to run with endurance the race that God has set before us. See, we're running a race, but there are so many things that are out there they're set up to trip us up. When I was in junior high, in Ingram Junior High, we got to run track and field at the appropriate time of the year. And one of the things that I loved to do was the hurdles. But they're purposely put in the way of you running. So instead of running the, the 400 meter, or the time is called the 440, you know, instead of running that one lap around the track, instead of just trying to see as fast as you can, now there's these, these hurdles, these actual things sticking up there that you've got to run and leap over. Well, my time running the 440 is not the same as me running the 440 with these hurdles. Especially if I don't clear the hurdle the right way and that hurdle makes me fall down and my shins are all bloody and thank God that never happened. But but there's things in all of our paths, hurdles, bear traps, these things that are trying to trip you up to keep you from running that race. Can I ask you this morning, what is it that's on your path that's tripping you up? That thing that doesn't help you get on with God. That thing that stops you cold in your tracks, just like that bear clamp going around your leg. What is it that stops you from getting to know God better? Let me say it another way. What is that thing that is your kryptonite? I mean, think about Superman. I mean, he's out there doing all these crazy things, and all of a sudden, the bad guy brings in the kryptonite and takes it out like, ah, and his powers just go boom. What is that in your life? What is keeping you from Christ? What is that thing that's weighting you down? Thinking about the, the different runners in training, and they'll put weights around their ankles so they can build up better endurance when they're training. But when they get to that race, they take those weights off because they don't want anything holding them down. Well, that's a training purpose, but so many of us will find ourselves with things that we're carrying on, and it can be unforgiveness. It can be they don't deserve it. It can be, and we can fill in a whole bunch of spots in there. So what is it for you? We looked at Jesus last week at the conclusion of our message, 
And even though we can see that it's not flesh and blood, it's not the face that we see on the person that's coming against us. Jesus, the Son of God, the perfect Son of God, who came here on the earth to pay for our sins, in the middle of paying for our sins, is going through the most excruciating, horrible experience a human being could go through. And he's stretched out on a cross. And these Roman soldiers are putting these huge spikes through his wrists. I can't even fathom the thought of how painful that was then the other then his feet and then all of a sudden they threw it up in the air and many believe it fell down into a channel so it went and it jerked all the weight of his body on those places he was inflicted the pain that would have been un Believable. He knows what they look like. You saw him do it. And if that's not enough, they're still setting at the, the foot of the base of the cross and they're, they're wagering, they're gambling to see who gets to take his clothes. And Jesus, in that moment, gave us the extension of that great example and said father forgive them they don't know what they're doing and if i can just kind of twist that around a little bit and interpret it in the way that we're looking at he says it's not their faces that's doing this to me this the struggle that i'm going through is not the people that actually did it But it's the enemy that thought he was taking me out, but it was also the work of God to pay for our sins. He says, but it's not them. See, they couldn't make Jesus pay for our sins any more than the devil could make them kill the Son of God. It wasn't that person. It wasn't the face of that Roman soldier. Jesus says, Father forgive them. Can I, can I just take that one step further? They didn't deserve to be forgiven. Yeah, they're following orders, and they may have a whole bunch of other excuses along those lines, but they killed Jesus. They did the physical act of putting the nails. They didn't deserve that. Yet he said, Father, Forgive them. They don't know it. You see, it's so easy for most of us to justify holding on to things. But you don't know what they did, Pastor Kevin. You don't know what she said or what he said or how he treated me or how they did all this. You don't understand. No, I'll be the first one to tell you I don't. neither did Jesus. In fact, it goes on to say that when Jesus gave up his last breath, that it was so painful for God the Father that he turned away and the entire earth went black. The the sun and the moon and the rotation of the waters and everything had been in creation for the first time ever. Everything went black. And it wasn't an eclipse. God turn his face away from earth because what his son was enduring. But even in that, God forgave. Jesus forgave. He prayed to his father to forgive them, and I believe he did. That was the plan all along. So even though we can justify and say, but you don't understand. No, I don't have to understand because Jesus gave this greater example that's going to supersede any excuse that I can come up with. You see in Romans 3, 23, it says, for everyone has sinned. Everyone's a pretty inclusive word. It doesn't like we wrestle not. It isn't like vague. 
It isn't saying, well, some have and others have less. Some did way more than everybody else. You won't believe how much this person did. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has missed it. Continues on. And we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Man, if you thought there was any question about if we're the means missing it, then the next one just lays it right out there. We all fall short. Like you're throwing that dart, and instead of it hitting, it just falls short and it hits down here. Of God's glorious standard. And fall short literally means to come late or be behind or find yourself lacking. If you put your life in the hands of God to be judged, you're going to go, oh, compared to your standard, God, man, I'm lacking. That's where every single one of us finds ourselves. But can I tell you, it doesn't just simply mean that everyone makes mistakes, so, eh, it's okay. Eh, God will forgive me. It isn't that point at all. It is to say that, hey, this is inclusive. Everybody, everyone, all. The same way that says, for we wrestle not. Everyone struggles with missing. But you see, sometimes we think about it in a weight system, I'm going to call it. That if the good outweighs the bad in my life, in the end, you know, yeah, I'm going to have some bad over here, but I'm going to try and do some good. And man, hopefully it's a 51 to 49 and the good versus the evil or the bad that I do. And God will say, eh, it's pretty close. That's not what it's about. It's about 100 Or it's about zero. If it's not a hundred. See, there's no graduating scale in God's eyes. You're either 100% or you're not. It's either all the way. You can say, but it's just a little bit. That little bit doesn't matter to God. But you see, it's not that he left us there. It's that he sent his son to pay the price as we talk so in depth about tonight. He paid the price not to just leave you there going, man, you all make mistakes and sorry for your luck. Too bad for you. One of the greatest analogies that I've ever heard describing this, I heard on Focus on the Family years and years ago, and I've told this story so many times to my children as an illustration for the way they're to live their lives, and perhaps you've heard it too. I can't even remember who the person is that was the guest speaker that was talking, but he said this, this child in this house really wanted to see a movie that had some bad things in it. And the parent's standard was, no, you can't see a movie that's got these things in it and had laid them all out. And the purpose isn't to tell you what they are. It's the purpose of the standard within the home. And the child said, but dad, but mom, you don't understand this just a little bit. It's it's just for a minute. It's just like it's not even there really. I mean, because that that scene is just like, boom, it's gone. And he said, I see. I I, I hear your, your... your argument. And, and the, the child went off thinking that he'd won that argument. The next day he comes home from school and he opens the door and he smells that wonderful smell that can only be fresh homemade brownies that his mom had made. And you, you, you know the thought, and even me saying it and describing it in such a way, your mouth starts to water a little bit and you start thinking, oh my gosh, so that is the greatest aroma to be wafting through the house and like he's dropping his book bag he's running he's like mama 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 and there in the on the table is this beautiful wonderful tin of brownies steam is still rising off of it you're just like 
Oh my gosh. She's like, mom, 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 can I please have a brownie? Can I please have a brownie? Oh my gosh, it smells so good and everything. Mom says, yes, I made them for you. But, but wait, 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 but wait, 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 wait. There's one little thing I got to tell you first. When I was mixing this all up, I did the chocolate, I did the flour, I did the eggs, I did oil, I did all the ingredients that, that, that would normally be in brownies that makes it taste so good. But there's this, just, just this one little tiny bit of cat poop that I put in there. But don't worry, it's not very much. It's, it's really so little you won't, you won't even know it's there. Haven't you know that child like, nope. No matter how good that brownie smells, no matter how much I can imagine what it's going to taste like, I'm not going to eat poop. But you see, the parent used that as an illustration to say, hey, it just has a little bit. But just think about how big this thing a brownie is, and there's just a little bit. We even know it. You want to know? I don't want any. I don't even a little bit of poop. You see, that's what God is. There's, there's not a little bit of sin that's allowed. But yet we find ourselves with traps that are laid out. Will you bow your head with me? A little bit. Still missing it. You may just be missing it by a little bit, or you may be missing it by a lot. That missing it may be through unforgiveness. And the argument of, but you don't understand what they did to me, doesn't hold up. The argument of, but they deserve what they're getting, doesn't hold up. What is that trap that's leeching onto you, that's leeching onto me? What is it? that Hebrews 12 is talking about that says that thing that so easily sidetracks you, that so easily steps into that claw. Are you walking on the path of God and something just happens? Or are you walking off the path of God like, I don't know, I, I can do both. I can live in the world and I can work, live for God. And, and the church people will never know what I do over here. And these people, I'm not going to tell them about church. What is it that snares you? What is it that like strangles you and tries to keep you from reaching what God has for you? Again, with every eye closed, our heads bowed. I'm asking you today to pray this with me. To make today the day that you choose God. That you choose to walk in his path. And you choose to watch where you step. You choose not to let the little bit of poop be in your brownies. If that's you, I want you to simply say this prayer with me. And I, I'm going to say the prayer for you to help you with the words, but it's really between you and God. Say, Jesus, today I surrender my life. I want to know you. I invite you to come live inside of me. I choose to follow your example. Show me how and what to do. Today I choose to obey, to love, to recognize the true battle, and to love others. I put my faith in you. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Father God, I pray for everyone who prayed that prayer today for the very first time, or maybe it's a, another time, or a, it's such a high number that we don't know how many times it's been that I've been prayed. It doesn't matter. The Word of God shows us that every, all of heaven rejoices when one accepts you, when one comes to you, and when another one comes back. God, I'm, I'm just thinking right now, for that person who just prayed that prayer, that's coming back to you. It's like the, the story that you gave of the prodigal son, the, the one that was in the household and, and left. But coming back, said the father, which is an example of you, stood on the porch looking from afar off. 
and got so excited. Lord, I thank you for that person. Each and every one of them. Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you made those steps this morning, what I want to ask you to do is to take the next step and jump into our communication um, avenues that we have with texting and text the word next, if you'll see it at the bottom of your screen, to 469 469- 289-1114. And those of you who are listening on the podcast, you can rewind this a couple of times if you need to. Text the word next to 469-289-1114. And in that, it's going to give you the options of what your next steps could be if you chose to do them. And we just want to be there. We want to help you avoid the pitfalls, to avoid the traps, and to help you walk that walk with God. And we're so happy for everyone that's taken this walk with us and this journey with us. And, and it's all about community. It's all about even doing life together. So we're excited that you're with us. And if this is the first time you're watching with us and joining us online, hey, we're so excited that you're with us. And we hope you'll join with us again next week. And for those of you who are wanting to be a part of our financial success as a church, you can do that by going to givetobelong.com. Again, you'll see that at the bottom of your screen. And it's simple. You can just jump through a couple of little um, questions they ask you if it's your first time being there. After that, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It'll just do it for you, and it's, it's really simple and not that difficult. Well, if you will stand to your feet wherever you're at, and let's pray and be dismissed. Father God, I just thank you once again for what you're doing in the lives of every single person. God, I thank you for the privilege I get to give these messages and to to give your words and the download that you give me to be able to share that. Lord, I pray for every person who's hearing this, whether it's live today or whether it's months or years in the future that they're watching this and of what happened today. Lord, I thank you that your word does not ever return void, and it is going to accomplish what you've set it out. Father, I speak a blessing over everyone who's contacted us and is making that journey with us and the prayer requests we've gotten in. Lord, and those people who've paid their tithes and their offerings this weekend, and even the people who are deciding right now to take a step and to be a part of the giving solution for this church. Father, I speak a blessing over all of them. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.